Hey guys, we're in uh, Flight Simulator 2020 and we're in my G58 cockpit. Um, I plan to flight in Navigraph and so we're going to be landing in Italy. Uh, it's going to be LIPQ is the airport. We're coming from LOWK. We've just transitioned onto the Airway uh, Papa 125 from the Arnos uh, VOR. We are uh, in GPS currently at the moment and then uh, autopilot will be taking down the V path. Um, down all the way down to 8,462 feet in Lupin. And then once we arrive at the initial approach fix, I'll go ahead and start the procedure for the uh, LNAV into the airport. But I gotta say, uh, FS2020 is just amazing. And of course, we're flying today with the Bruner yoke. This is a real Baron G58 yoke that I've uh, retrofitted. And uh, it's just, it's phenomenal. But anyway, you should try this flight. It's it's not that long and it's it's really scenic. All right, guys. So we just captured the uh, the V path, and we currently have the uh, aircraft descending. So one thing I always recommend too is when you are going to intercept the V path, make sure you have your hands on the throttle and be prepared to back it off because you know the autopilot is going to pitch the nose down, and you're going to increase the airspeed. All right, so we'll come back when we're on the L now for the approach. All right, so I got the GoPro strapped to my head. This is actually the first time I've done this. It's really freaking silly. Uh, but anyway, so we are in the Baron cockpit once again, and we are making our way down the uh, the L nav um, down into LIPQ. And I have my Navigraph set up already. I've already reviewed the approach plate. Um, and yeah, we'll be coming in shortly. So once I get to the final approach fix, I'll go ahead and turn the camera back on. All right, so right now the autopilot's turning the aircraft at the bottom of the descent over here from PQ-512. Um, so this way we can go ahead and join the PQ-513 leg. And we're using the RNAV approach down into LIPQ. And we are expecting, let's see, runway nine. And uh, yeah, just look at the scenery on this. It's just beautiful. Okay, so I can see the airfield. We have it in sight. Looks like a straight in. So we're gonna review the uh, the checklist here for landing. So landing lights on. Autopilot will turn that off as we get closer. AC off, you all damper off. Prop sync off, even though it's not modeled here in uh, FS 2020. And for landing, we'll put the gear down shortly, flaps 30, and bring our speed down to about 95. So right now I'm just going to start slowing the aircraft down and getting our flaps range here. Okay, bring in the first notch of flaps. And mixture and props are going to be full lean for landing, a uh, full, full mixture, sorry, and uh, full RPM. I can see the uh, the poppy lights in sight and let's quickly check here our decision altitude here it looks like 360 feet which I have set in the uh, minimums here and the barrow yep So the one thing I don't like about this Virtual Fly TQ6 Plus is the fact that it does have uh, reverse thrust on it because it can do, you know, obviously a multi-engine aircraft. The only problem with that is that there's a detent on the reverse and I still haven't figured out how to calibrate it um, so that you can go ahead and use it, you know, as putting it at that detent would be completely, you know, idle power. Um, so I'm probably gonna take it apart and just take the, take the pins out of it uh, for the detents, I saw that there were screws in there, so I could just take them out, and uh, this way it'll just be permanent. Getting a little closer. Now, I'm not modeling any type of communications right now or anything like that. I'm still making sure that the uh, the G1000 and everything else is is calibrated, working, and 
intercepting the R navs and whatnot. Okay, the gear's coming down, last notch of flaps. And we are still on the glide path. using the uh, the NXI uh, version of the G1000 which is phenomenal in my opinion I think it's absolutely incredible they did such a great job um, so if you haven't downloaded it yet and you're not using it I suggest you give it a shot I did not notice any type of frame rate drop really maybe one or two but not much all right so we're coming in here uh, we're about 700 feet so I'm gonna disengage the autopilot and take it from here sitting around uh, 90 knots or so so the other problem with this TQ6 plus having that detent there it really disturbs the whole flare uh, because as you're trying to roll the power back nice and gentle um, what happens is, is that you end up hitting that detent and it just it kind of screws up the whole motion which I'm not really a fan of at all and as you can see we have the poppy lights there red over white we're all right all red you're dead and all white you're too high throttle back just a little more and right now I'm looking all the way down the end of the runway and bring it back to idle try to get level flight and gently hold the nose a little bit of rudder there we go And let's go into Navigraph here, bring up our airport diagram. All right. Travel down to the runway to the next exit point. I kind of wish I took that first exit when I landed, but our speed was a little too high. Looks like taxiway alpha. So we're gonna be making our right-hand turn. We're gonna, have, we're gonna flip on our taxi lights, turn off our landing lights, clean up the aircraft a little bit. Let's go ahead and get our flaps up. Sorry I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at the uh, Navigraph chart, unfortunately. A beautiful airport. So a little overview, overview here. The, the compass that I'm using here is the Virtual Fly Compass. I didn't like the fact that I didn't really have control of the standby uh, or the, uh, the LED light in there. And, uh, so I ended up installing my own and uh, I've been really happy with that. I've been using these little fairy lights, um, you know, because and they come with all these different types of resistors that you can use uh, to go ahead and tie it in. And in my case, I'm using a 12 volt lighting system, um, which has been great. And I, of course, I have this tied into the dimmers and I'll go through that real shortly once we go ahead and park.
The other thing is too is uh, I'm gonna be upgrading from the real sim gear to the Aviatec. Uh, so I did put the order in over Black Friday for the Aviatec uh, units and I can't even tell you how excited I am about that. Because um, they actually have a hardware function dimming. So I'll be able to tie the actual screen into my dimming switch for my flight instruments, which I can't do right now. Um, on Moby Flight on the Discord channel, you know, there was uh, there's a couple of people there. Well, Thomas was the one who figured out uh, doing an overlay, and that did work. Uh, uh, but I'm just not a fan of you know having something like that because it, it does eat up some of the frame rates a little bit. Uh, so if I could do it as a hard dimmer, I'd rather go that route. One thing I noticed is that the, uh, the vehicles in Flight Simulator is just unbelievable. They uh, they tend to just run wherever the heck they want, kind of like how I'm doing with the airplane. And sometimes they just don't freaking move, like this guy. Like, I wish I had a horn in an airplane right now. Ah, but whatever, so we're going to go ahead and start shutting it down. Okay, so to kind of look over here, so we have the uh, flight instruments. This is the dimmer that we're gonna eventually tie into the G1000. So right now I have to use my instrument floodlight. As you can see, I have that tied into the dimmer. And that's also tied in series with this switch, the instrument flood switch. So you can control this dimmer. It's not going to work unless you have this uh, light, the floodlight on. Uh, the same deal with the sub panel lighting here. I have a switch for that. And this controls everything down here, This the whole sub-panel lighting assembly, um, which is really nice. I can really dim this out. Now, the other thing was, too, is um, these are flight illusion gauges. Unfortunately, and I didn't really like the LED, again, not having LED control, so I installed my own, and I it, you know tied it to the standby instruments light. Now, these two gauges here, the Beechcraft uh, prop amps and the de-icing pressure gauge, these are actual real instruments out of the real air aircraft. Uh, the prop amps are just running, because it, it, it's an ammeter, so we're running a, a 2K resistor off the positive leg uh, back to the Arduino uh, 20, 20, uh, 2560 Mega. And it actually, it works pretty good. I mean, it puts us pretty darn close to, you know, where we need to be. It's just about almost 16. Uh, it'd be hard to, you know, hopefully the prop amps will be modeled much better. But anyway, uh, and the Surface Auto, I just have that tied into a servo. Um, and that's it. But it does work. Uh, the landing gear switch here, this is a real switch out of the aircraft. A much older one because, you know, the new ones, they have the actual lever. This here, you actually have a notch. Uh, the same deal with the flaps here. This is a real flaps lever. So just like in the real plane here, let me turn on the floodlights here. So it, you have to pull this out and go down one notch. And then you pull out again and you go down another notch. But on the way back, as if you look closely, uh, there's some there's some notches there and you can just hit it on the way up. Uh, same deal with these uh, alternator switches here. You have to pull it out and then pull it down to, to turn it off. Uh, so you don't inadvertently turn them off mid-flight. So turn off the batteries here, Master Avionics. And I hate that Microsoft does that. It goes back to that screen where it tells you to continue. And uh, that's it. So, oh, of course we got this too. That's always fun. But anyways, hope you guys liked the video. Um, if you have questions about the build, I am going to be redoing the center console because I did manage to get a hold of a real uh, Baron center console. It, you know, the full aluminum one. And we're going to be retrofitting the controls into that. Um, I have a friend who's helping me currently too. His name is Kyle. He's 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 great. Um, and he's going to be working on helping me get the uh, servo, uh, or not servo, but the motor for it uh, so we can drive it. And so, yeah, because I have a real barren trim wheel as well for the elevator and the aileron. The rudder is a little expensive right now. They want almost like $2,000 for that. So I don't think I'm going to go for that one. I think we'll just 3D print that one and just go from there with that. Uh, but anyways, that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. GoPro, stop recording.